Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone, this is Toybox once again from the video. So, starting off here with layer 1, we have Furbicon. Now, I honestly couldn't find much about this one, even using the Wayback Machine. I know, great start to the Iceberg series. But from the sound of it, it kind of sounds like it was just site, some type of convention for Furbies. I'm not really 100% sure. Again, I couldn't find anything about it. I don't even know why I added it into the video. I mean, for all we know, maybe it was like the um, the precursor to the uh, first ever furry convention. I, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, if any of you guys know what FurbyCon was, uh, please do let me know uh, either in the description or through my Instagram, which is linked in the um, uh, in, just, in the description. I mean, how many just let me know in the comments, not the description. You guys can't mess this there. Oh gosh. <laughs> Really great start to the video. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys know what that is, please message me through my Insta, which is linked in the description, or message me in the comment section what Furbicon was. I appreciate that. Next up on our list is Warrior Cats. Now, I am very vaguely familiar with this, as I have had friends who know what Warrior Cats is. But Warrior Cats refers to a book series by the same name, um, by authors Aaron Hunter and Dan Jolly, real names being Kate Carey and Cherith Baldry. The books follow the adventures of five clans of feral cats that live in a large forest and who follow the spirits of their warrior ancestors, Star Clan, for generations. The names of these five clans of the cat the cats are a part of are the Thunder Clan, Shadow Clan, River Clan, Wind Clan, and the Sky Clan. The reason this one is on the list is because it's one of those things that kind of, I guess, introduced people to furries. Like, most of my furry friends have either heard of Warrior Cats or have at least read one book in the Warrior Cats series, so I don't really, I myself don't plan to read anything, <laughs> I don't really plan to read any Warrior Cats books, I apologize about that. Um, but from what I've heard, they do seem pretty interesting, and... I'm willing to give it a try, but I doubt I'll be too into it. So, uh, yeah, maybe in the future I'll, uh, report back on that, how I, what I thought of the, uh, Warrior Cats book. <laughs> Alright, so up next are werewolves. I, I just, I don't really feel like I need to explain this one. It's, I think everyone knows what werewolves are, but just some history. Werewolves are fictional creatures that have been told in stories dating as far back as 2100 BC that depict a man who, during a full moon, transforms into a large, man-eating wolf. Then, at sunrise, they transform back into a human and have new memories of what happened the previous night. Now, if you're not new to what a furry is, I think it's confident to say that you know what we've done with werewolves. Yeah. That. Obviously, the connection between werewolves and furries is pretty obvious. It's there. It's obvious. A werewolf is basically someone who transforms into their own fursona. Many games and non-furry... Yeah. Many games, furry and non-furry, have been made about werewolves. These games include titles such as Dastra, The Wolf Among Us, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, which is a card game, The Quarry, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So, uh, yeah, just needless to say, um, if you're a furry, a new furry, um, you're most likely going to come across something werewolf-related. And all I can say to that is, on behalf of, <laughs> on behalf of most furries, I apologize. Up next is Blissful Ignorance. Blissful Ignorance refers to an art piece created by user Cappy, which was posted on Fur Affinity on July 6 of 19, 2019. The art in question is a three-panel comic showing what I assume to be the artist's persona driving a car that starts to make a loud groaning and squeaking sound, to show that kind of the car is breaking down, to which they turn up the volume of the radio music to drown out the sounds of the car falling apart. Now, while I personally don't find this comic or meme to be funny, Others out there, I'm sure, do. If you find it funny, then, you know, I hope you get a good laugh out of it and whatnot. But again, I personally don't find it funny, but I do find it to be something that I would do if I was driving and my car started to break down. I would just sit there and cry and turn up the radio. <laughs> who wouldn't do that? Oh, who wouldn't do that? 
Everyone would. Up next is, I just don't get the attraction, son. Again, with this one, I couldn't really find anything about it, but what I assume it was, uh, was just some sort of meme that included a father and son, with the father saying, I just don't get the attraction, son, to a son just as a furry or looking at pictures of furry, possibly even a Disney cartoon character, for all we know. Again, couldn't find much of it, but that's just my take on what it might have been. Um, for some of these, I did look as much as I could. I looked all over the place to find these, and I personally couldn't find any, but if those of you know what, uh, the whole I just don't get the attraction sun thing is, then, you know, at least you know what it is. <laughs> but I hope I'm close. I do hope I'm close. Alright, this one, uh, yeah. Playboy bunnies. <laughs> oh, gosh. Playboy bunnies refers to a magazine created... Uh, in December of 1953, that sole purpose was to arouse its viewers, the magazine name being not Playboy Bunnies, but Playboy. Some of the images in Playboy magazines showed girls wearing a revealing black outfit with a set of black and white bunny ears on their head, though sometimes this also would include a, uh, a big white cotton tail as well. Obviously, Furry saw this and, <laughs> and went crazy. With people drawing their personas in an attractive pose while wearing the trademark Playboy outfit, because why the fuck not? One search on any internet site will come up with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of images of people either wearing their fursuit with the Playboy outfit on, or art of someone's persona in the Playboy outfit. I just... Oh, I swear, man. Furs will do anything to make, like, to make our personas look either cute or hot. I just... I don't... <laughs> Moving on. Look, honey! Mascots! I don't know if it's just bad luck or not, but I can never seem to find the original memes, so I apologize for that. But basically, what I assume the meme was, um, was just... It kind of, I guess, <laughs> it was a wife showing her husband to group of furries, saying, Look, honey! Mascots! With a husband looking rather unhappy. This... Really not much to share with these meme ones, especially if I can find jack shit whenever I look online for them. This iceberg might be a little bit outdated. I apologize for that. Uh, in the future, if I ever do another iceberg video, I will definitely make sure that it is up to date um, and that I can actually find everything on there. I mean, I didn't have to include the ones that I couldn't find, but, you know, I wanted to make this video as long and as entertaining as I possibly could. And that included entire days of <laughs> stress of looking these up. Just goddamn, man. God damn. Cringe compilations. Cringe compilations have been around for many, many years, which basically they show a collection of videos considered cringe by either the creator or a compilation um, cringe by the viewers, I guess. People can submit... Uh, <laughs> cringe videos and do apologize for that cough. It was really, really rude of me. How could I? I got a cough in my viewers ears but um, basically cringe compilations are just again Videos a lot like a large uh, collection of videos that are considered cringe by the uploader or they are viewer submitted uh, cringe videos that the uploader puts into a long video and makes obviously with the cringe videos there are many, many furry cringe compilations. Um, I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't be surprised if there was new ones being made every year. I wouldn't. Furries are just known for a lot of things, and one of them is being very cringe. Layer 2. Starting off with Layer 2, um, Kimono Mimi Niko, Neko. Kimono Mimi has more so to do with a style rather than a meme or what have you. Kimono Mimi slash Neko are Japanese style fursuits that are nothing short of fucking adorable. They are just, oh, I, I fell head over heels for them, man. They're so cute. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be goth. <laughs> they feature a chibi-esque look to them with large sparkling eyes, more rounded heads, shorter muscles, and a much, much puffier body. They commonly use bright colors as well. 
Perhaps in the future I can try to get my paws on one. I'm hoping so. I have a few uh, personas that I think would look cute as uh, Kimono Mimis. So, yeah. But the earliest record I can find on the appearance of a Kimono Mimi was in 2005 for an event called Transfer. Now, with that being said, YouTube and being on YouTube, uh, this platform has many channels dedicated to people wearing a Kimono Mimi style fursuit, some of which will be linked in the description below. So uh, have fun watching those and um, hopefully you don't die of cuteness overload. <laughs> these suits, I warn you, these suits are fucking adorable. Pokemon. Pokemon is both a game and a show series created in Nihonbashi, Tokyo, Japan on April 23rd, 1998. I apologize if I pronounced... Uh, I knew those names wrong. I mean, Nihonbashi? I really... I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. But anyway, the show and games feature a main protagonist named Ash who goes on adventures finding new Pokemon to collect and use in battles against other Pokemon. Fun note for those who don't know, but Pokemon actually translates to pocket monsters, which is just really cute in my opinion. With how cute and unique each Pokemon is, it's no wonder furries were attracted to them, even making suits of them, some of which look super badass and just super cool. A lot of furries that I've come across, especially, uh, are just, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they are in absolute love with Pokemon, or one Pokemon specifically. For me, I'm not really that into Pokemon. In fact, I do find it quite boring. I apologize. Um, however, I did like Pokemon Go, just because it requires people to go outside and search for new Pokemon, which allowed users to finally know what grass felt like, while also allowing them to see the sun for the first time and get some much needed exercise. On a serious note, Pokemon Go was the, probably the only Pokemon game I've ever really played in my life, and I would play it since it felt nice to wander around outside, going on an adventure to find new and interesting Pokemon to catch and use in battle. In fact, the place I live at, actually, is a Pokestop. You know, it's really interesting, so, you know, it kind of benefits. It's nice to get outside, nice to wander around. Touch grass. Now, while Pokemon Go has its good moments and its funny reactions to people not being able to catch a Pokemon, I thought this subject would be incomplete without mentioning many injuries and deaths that were ultimately caused by this game. In total, and I'm sure still counting, Pokemon Go has a total of 26 deaths and 64 injuries, most of which occurred in 2016 when the game was released. Now, to me, what is most disturbing is that when taking a look at how these people were injured or killed, most of them seem to be caused by other people whose path was either crossed or by other users of the game luring their victims to their location, which is just... That's awful, man. My heart goes out to those who lost their lives playing Pokemon Go. You didn't deserve that. You were just out playing a nice, fun game, catching some Pokemon, and your life was just abruptly cut for no good reason. Nya. Nya refers to a sound that is made by furries, most commonly those with a cat persona. Now, according to Wikipedia, Nya is the Japanese equivalent for meow. And that's, that's really it. There's really not much to say to this one since it's just a sound that's mostly used by furries and some weebs. Maid Marian. Maid Marian, apologize if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, refers to a character in the classic Disney movie Robin Hood, created in November 8th, 18, 1973. Goodness. <laughs> the movie features a protagonist fox with the same name, Robin Hood, whose main goal is to steal from the rich and give to the poor. Kind of weird thing to do, but yeah, it's not, you know, I have no place to judge. <laughs> Along his adventure, Robin Hood comes across a vixen, a female fox, named Maid Marian. The two eventually fall in love and get married. Now, with that romantic love story out of the way, let's get to what she has to do with furries. Or we, or we couldn't, that's also an option. <laughs> with Marian being an anthropomorphic fox, furries saw a chance to fucking ruin her. For some, <laughs> for some furries, she was a goddess. She was a crush. I'm honestly surprised that I haven't seen a fursuit of her yet. Then again, I honestly hope I never do. Maybe it's for the best. Star Fox. Now, Star Fox is again one of those things that I'm vaguely familiar with, though I have not played any of the Star Fox games or seen any of the, like, anything really related to it too much, but I have heard a lot about it. 
Star Fox refers to an arcade-style third-person real shooter game series of the same name, created on February 21st, 1993. Though a movie is rumored to come out December 19th, 2024, which I would honestly love to see, it from what I've seen of the uh, poster, it looks really good, and, you know, I'm willing to see it. Anyway, the game series follows an anthropomorphic fox named Fox McCloud and his team of other anthropomorphic animals who fly through space trying to fight an evil scientist named Andros who invades the Lilat star system. Uh, again, Farris had to take this one and ruin it. With many artists using him for various purposes, most of them are unsavory, nearly every furry knows about Fox McCloud, even if they haven't played a single Star Fox game. To most, he's attractive and badass. Most people, however, draw us animate him in a relationship with Falco Lombardi, Fox McCloud's other team member who appears to be an anthropomorphic falcon with blue feathers covering his body with the exception of a red ring of feathers around his eyes. Do keep in mind, looking up any furry art of either character without safe search on will almost indefinitely cause you to come across some rather... interesting images. <laughs> I'm not a furry, but... I'm not a furry, but refers to yet another furry meme of someone saying, I'm not a furry, before adding but to the end of their sentence. The implications of this are pretty obvious, so yeah, the person com speaking completely contradicting themselves by adding but to the end of their sentence. There's, again, really not much I can find about that one. The point of no return. The Point of No Return f refers to an art piece created by user Silverwolf866, which was posted to Furfinity on June 20th, 2018. The art appears to show two characters that I assume to be from the kids' show My Little Pony, which is a show about talking ponies that ultimately has to deal with them um, learning about friendship and trying to get other ponies to understand what friendship is. However, this image is accompanied by a poem that reads, I have brought you, that our passions may fuse and merge. In your mind... You've already succumbed to me. Dropped all defenses. Completely succumbed to me. Now you are here with me. No second thoughts. You've decided. Decided. Past the point of no return. No backward glances. Our games of make-believe are at an end. Past all thought, or if, or when. No use resisting. Abandon thought, and let the dream descend. What raging fire shall flood the soul? What rich desire unlocks its door? What sweet seduction lies before us, past the point of no return? The final threshold? What warm, unspoken secrets will we learn, beyond the point of no return? You have brought me to that moment where words run dry, to that moment where speech disappears into silence. Silence. I have come here, hardly knowing the reason why. In my mind, I've already imagined our bodies, entwining, defenseless, and silent. And now I am here with you. No second thoughts. I've decided. Decided. Bronies. Oh, gosh, I don't really know if I want to get into this one. <laughs> Bronies refers to a group of people who are batshit crazy over the kid's show My Little Pony. <laughs> they dress up as different ponies from the show, some even making fursuits of some of the characters. Now, Freys and Bronies, from what I've seen, don't get along very well. The reason for this is really unknown to me, as the answer varies from person to person. Uh, for more information about bronies, I will link a documentary in the description that goes over nearly everything about bronies, so have fun watching that, if your sanity is still there. Lola Bunny. Oh dear god. Lola Bunny refers to a female anthropomorphic bunny who first appeared in the 1996 film Space Jam. Lola is usually depicted as being Bugs Bunny's girlfriend, making appearances in Looney Tunes shows, movies, and games. Oh boy, this one's rough. I'm looking at the chart in front of me, and it does not look good. So, for the sake of my own sanity, I'm going to move on from this one. You guys can figure out what Phrase did to her in your own time. Have fun! Zootopia. Maybe I should just skip this one too. My sanity is still here. I shouldn't let it go to waste. Zootopia was a movie created by Disney on March 4th, 2016. 
The movie features a protagonist anthropomorphic bunny named Judy Hobbs, whose dream is to become a police officer for the ZPD, Zootopia Police Department. Eventually, she meets a fox by the name of Nick Wilde. At first, their partnership seems... questionable? Rocky, you might say? But as the movie continues, the two become good friends slash partners, eventually confessing their love to each other at the very end of the movie. Now, at this point, Disney and Furious have a bad relationship, I'm pretty sure they did before. But with the release of this movie, things only got worse. Much worse. There was an influx of new furries following the movie's release, as well as an influx in, in the amount of furry... You know what. <laughs> no matter where you go, there will almost certainly be some... art of any Zootopia character. Um, I do want to add a little funny story about this, is actually I was not meant to see Zootopia at all. I went to the movie theater with my mother and my stepfather, and what ended happening was we somehow walked into the wrong movie theater, and we just, you know, we just said, fuck it, we'll just stay here, and we did, and I really enjoyed the movie. Definitely my first introduction to furries, and my first, like, I guess, turn on to them. We both know how I meant that. Rainforest 2015. Oh, dear God. Rainforest 2015 was nothing short of a complete disaster. It was definitely one of the worst furry conventions to date. The reason I'm not calling it the worst is because, in my opinion, there was a worse one that will be covered in part two of this very mini Iceberg series. To start things off for this convention, this cursed, cursed convention, the organizer said that an evil curse was afflicting Rainforest 2015. I guess in some way they were right, unfortunately. Booze, mushrooms, and nitrous oxide, known as laughing gas, were not uncommon in the halls of this unforgettable convention. According to witnesses, one furry even unleashed a wave of toilet water, quote, two and a half inches deep. Other furries wore diapers because they loved the crinkling sound they made. Fucking weirdos. Those same diapers were later found to contain piss and shit. Yep. There's, there's just, there's really not much I can say to that, to be completely honest with you. Things got so bad that police had to show up arresting some furries for assault, some for sexual assault, drug possession, as well as other crimes that will not be named. They even had to call the fire department and plumbers to come take care of things. Oh boy. Rainforest will surely forever go down in history as one of the worst furry conventions ever held. Here's to hoping that we never have another one. So far we've been good, but things don't last forever. Unfortunately. Layer 3. Oh for fuck's sake. Softcore Yif. From what I have unfortunately seen, softcore Yef appears to be one of two things. It's either Yef that is drawn in a soft style, that being a style that makes things look soft, or Yef that is not as sexual as other Yef. A softer take, if you will. I couldn't really find much on this one, besides mental scars and a myriad of images that are what softcore is. To be completely honest, I, I think I'm just fine with my search ending at, uh, images? I don't think I want to go deeper into this one. I think I'm good. Yeah, I I'm good. Animation memes. Animation memes are, well, probably what you imagine them to be. They're memes, but in an animated form. For the most part, there's nothing explicitly inappropriate with these, though there were a few with rather obvious implications. When it comes to phrase, animation memes usually include a VR chat character or a 3D render of a character from a game, that usually being a Dastra, or some sort of novel. FNAF. FNAF, otherwise known as Five Nights at Freddy's, or the amazing YouTuber, who you should definitely go watch, is a point-and-click style horror game where you take the role as an anonymous security guard whose only job is to survive from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. with the animatronics at the restaurant you watch over try to hunt you down and stuff you inside an animatronic mascot suit. The first FNAF game was made back in August 8th of 2014 by developer Scott Cawthon and is still an ongoing horror franchise with a DLC to the latest game rumored to come out next year, as well as a movie that is supposed to be out by next year. Now, FNAF hosts five main characters, those being Freddy Fazbear, the main star of the show, Chica the Chicken, Bonnie the Bunny, Foxy the Pirate Fox, and Golden Freddy, which is just a secret golden version of Freddy Fazbear. Since these are anthropomorphic characters, yeah, you can see where this is going. Freddy's being introduced to any anthropomorphic character is almost never good news. I can't think of one time that it was. Beastars. <sighs> 
Beastars is both a manga and an anime that follows the story of a lonish wolf named Legoshi, who soon falls in love with a bunny known as the so-called school slut named Haru. All the while, Legoshi has to fight his predatory instincts in order to keep Haru alive. To say side note, I just... Oh, the US voice actor for Legoshi is just... It, it should honestly be illegal to be that attractive. Anyway, I digress. But with the previous anthropomorphic characters, I won't go too much into detail about what furries have done with them too. Just you can find that out for yourself on uh, E621 or uh, Rule 34. Uh, have fun with that. Just make sure you're alone when you do this. Twitter artists. Now, Twitter is just an awful place to begin with, so I hope I didn't really need to explain this one too much. Furry Twitter artists are infamous for creating some of the most degenerate furry art to ever fucking exist. But again, it's Twitter. That place is just bad all around. I'm honestly so fucking happy that I deleted it. That place is just... If you have Twitter, oh gosh, I hope you're safe. I hope you're okay. Who the fuck hurt you? Tell me. Dragons. Dragons in the furry community are well known for being over-sexualized, mainly portrayed as being dom slash tops. If you have any sort of dragon persona, there's almost no escape from a bunch of people asking you to do any sort of sexual roleplay with you. On a non-sexual note, dragons can fall into two communities, those being furries and scalies. Scalies are people who have a lizard as their OC, or anything that doesn't have fur, hence the name scaly. If you have a lizard as an OC, it is still possible to get a fursuit of them. I have seen some people with lizard, uh, lizard fursuits, which I think is just really creative and just really unique and cool. Or if you have a dinosaur mask, you can fur that up with ears and some neck floof. So, uh, yeah. Even if you have a lizard as an OC, you can still fall into the category of furries. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, whoa is both an emoticon and a sound that furries use. <sighs> A woe well can be used when someone is shocked or surprised by something, or when someone is curious about something. As, unfortunately, I'm sure most of you people have heard this phrase being used. Oh whoa, well, what's this? Also, fun fact, the god of knowledge, Thoth, I believe, is his name, was spelled a oh, well. So it would not be rude to ask, or incorrect to ask. Oh whoa, well, what's this? Undertale slash Deltarune. Undertale and Deltarune are both 2D pixelated games created by the developer Toby Fox, both of which follow a somewhat similar story. In Undertale, you play as a character named Frisk who tries to make their way through by sparing monsters and making friends with them, eventually having to be Asgore, the king of monsters, and Underground. However, a surprise battle ensues with you having to go up against the first character you met in the game, otherwise known as Flowey. After defeating him, you battled against the god form of Asgore's son, Asriel. Finally, after beating him, you free all monsters from the underground, causing humans and monsters to, once again, live together. Deltarune is rumored to be a sequel to Undertale, and I can kind of see why, where you play as a child named Chris, who lived with Asgore's wife, Toriel, which is also the second character you meet in Undertale. But with an unfortunate encounter with a bully at school, Chris and his bully, Susie, fall underground, where they are forced to fight their way through monsters in order to get back up to the surface. Why is this only a three of the list? Again, anthropomorphic animals and furries. What more can I say? Benefits of anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is giving human-like traits to something that isn't biologically human. This can be the ability to speak, walking on two legs, having hands, or a combination of all three. Some people claim that there are benefits of anthropomorphism, those benefits in question being the ability to re reinforce human-animal connection, display empathy towards their companion animals, or show care and interest towards animals and animals' well-being. There, again, wasn't much I could find with this one besides what I just shared, so uh, take that, that what you will. Fluffy tails. Fluffy tails are just what they sound like. Tails, they're fluffy. At first, I thought that was all there was to it. However, I was... I was dead wrong. All I had to do was look a little deeper, unfortunately. Huh. <sighs> fluffy tail is apparently a genre of yif. It still contains tails that are fluffy, but with a sexual twist to it. For once, I wish I hadn't looked deeper. Oh, the stuff I do for you guys. Ear headbands. Ear headbands are exactly what they sound like. They're nothing more than headbands with animal ears on them. Something you'd see people wearing with costumes to a party or for Halloween. Ear headbands can also be worn if someone doesn't have a fursuit to wear. A fursuit head to wear. Oh. Wait. What is this? This might have deceived me. 
Oh god. Oh thank god. A normal one. Oh, I have been blessed! Fuck me, man. Vixen Awooga-ing. Vixen Awooga-ing. All I could find for this one was a disturbing Tumblr cat run by someone who had an appeal to serial killers and gore. Huh. Even going as far as to post an oil canvas artwork of dinosaurs eating a CEO. CEO, what exactly? I honestly have no idea. Now, I'll just for you guys the details of this image, but I will say that uh, his top half and lower half are um, not really connected, you could say. Now, whether this person is still active or not is something that I could not determine since Tumblr, as far as I'm aware, doesn't show the date of when a person of when a post is made by a person. Let's just hope this person got some help and they're doing much better now because, in my opinion, they kind of did some help being in love with people like Jeffrey Dahmer and posting art of CEOs who are not connected from the top half and lower half. Collars. Collars are definitely a thing furries and non-furries wear, whether for a costume to look cute or for sexual fantasies. Collars will forever have a bad reputation as something someone wears when they get passionate in the bedroom. Monster Girls. Monster Girls are just that. Monster Girls. Think of Monster High. Or, I guess, the new Wednesday show on Netflix, which if you have not watched that, I really fucking suggest watching it. It is so good. I am not sponsored, but hell, sponsor me. I know I'm still a small YouTuber, but come on. I don't, I don't care if you don't pay me. Just, the show is so good. Watch it. Anyway, some furries have taken it upon themselves to create art of their persona as a monster, which I'll show an example of a commission I got of one of my personas as a monster, which I'm really proud of. I think it's really cool. I will also link the artist in the description below, as well as pin their name in the comments, because it's good to give credit to artists. Obviously, there are some less than savory images of furry monster girls, but from what I came across, most seem pretty tame. Thankfully. So you've all heard of RAR XD, but now comes the uh, cousin, I guess, RAR X3. According to Google, RAR X3 is slang for I love you and cute dinosaur speak. Fuck me. The X3 being the same as XD. God, I, I just, uh, moving on, please. Layer 4. Layer 4 strikes out pretty strong with, um, Dragon Dildo. Yep. It's it's what it sounds like. Moving on. Femboys. Femboys are almost no different than your average cross-dresser or transvestite. It's primarily used to address a male who dressed in clothes of the opposite sex. However, thanks to us furries, femboys have been way too fucking oversexualized. We we really need to stop oversexualizing things. We just we just stop hold on that? Oh, what the hell? Who am I kidding? That's never gonna fucking stop. <laughs> as long as furries are around, that's never going to stop. E621. Now, as I briefly, briefly, briefly mentioned before, E621 refers to a furry website that consists primarily of NSFW artwork of just about anything furry and even non-furry related. Much like Rule 34. I I'm sure almost every furry knows about this. I'm pretty sure every furry knows what E621 is. If you're curious to know more about it, I do warn you if we decide to Google it, make sure that you're alone when you do it, and if you need to, put yourself in incognito, please. Brand New Animal Brand New Animal, otherwise known as BNA, which I had no idea was the actual name, is an anime created by Studio Trigger on March 21st of 2020. The anime features a girl named Michiru, who recently discovers that she was part of- that she was part Tanuki. She then runs away, where she meets other half-human, half-animal people just like her who are trying to find out why they transform into animals. Again, furries and anything really animal-related. Fucking ruined it. Moving on! Furry memes. Furry memes are just memes that are furry. Some are cringe, some are funny, some are outright fucking sexual! Discord. Discord and furries have a specific relationship that I would agree is both good and bad. Furries using Discord, like me, can be pretty cringe when we want to. Um, however, just like every other social media app, please be careful when using Discord. I have come across my fair share of creeps, so please, please be careful on here. Fragile Heterosexuality 
Fragile heterosexuality refers to a meme that shows a dam with the word denial on it, blocking water with the words gay furry porn written over it. In front of the dam is a small town with the caption my fragile heter heterosexuality over it. This meme suggests that the person is questioning their own sexuality after looking at furry porn. There's not much I can really say to these meme ones, and maybe it's for the best. Maybe it's for the best. Fur affinity. Fur affinity is a social media website dedicated specifically to furries, where you can post nearly anything SFW and NSFW. SFW being safe for work and NSFW being not safe for work, such as porn, gore, you name it. People can comment on your posts also while looking at some vaguely sexual ads on the side, because why not? Fun for all ages. Rating colon E. Rating colon E, or rating E, just seems to be the rating system on E621 or images of the website itself being rated five stars. That's really all I could find about this one. Uh, again, maybe for the best. Protogen personas. Basically, a protogen is a cyborg-like anthropomorphic creature. They wear a visor on their head that is capable of showing many different emotions along with many different funny, like, they can, hell, you could probably watch a movie on it. While the traditional protogen doesn't have a mouth, some have taken it upon themselves to give their protogen a hidden mouth, though this has been met with some rather unnecessary criticism from people claiming that their protogen is an illegal protogen. Even though I don't think there's such a thing. If you want your protogen to have a mouth, they can. You do what you want. It's your protogen, not anyone else's. Coming out as a furry. Coming out as a furry has both pros and cons. Pros being it can get a large weight off your chest. Uh, cons being it can also cause friends to leave you or for a family to disown you. Coming out as a furry is never easy. In fact, you really don't even have to come out as a furry to your friends and family if you so desire. It's a choice that's ultimately up to you. Casual RP. Casual RP, or casual roleplay, is exactly what it sounds like. It's just some good old roleplay with nothing really sexual or gruesome. It's just low commitment free roleplay. That's really all it is. Scalies. As said before, according to the dictionary, scalies are reptile like animal characters with human characteristics. Basically, furries, but with scales, probably a bit less sexual. Avians. Avians are just furries with, an av with avian personas slash fursuits. That's really all it is. The Knot. Oh, for fuck's sake, we've been doing so good. So good! Up until now! My sanity was finally restored. But no. The Knot refers to a term called nodding, which is basically where someone's persona, not someone else's persona or something else. A knot, for those who are blissfully unaware, is the word used to describe a dog's penis. Oh shit, looking at this list, it's not even close to the worst. Oh dear god. The worst comes in part two of this iceberg, so, uh, yeah, have a, have fun with that. I wish you luck. And I wish my past self, um, a better sanity. Non-mammal anthros. Non-mammal anthros are just those with a creature that isn't mammal as their persona. Like, kind of like scalies, or aquatics, in a way. Layer 5. Congrats on making it to layer 5 of this iceberg. However, your journey isn't over just yet. There's still five more layers to come in part two of this very mini series, so I wish you luck. Shark Girls. Shark Girls are female shark personas, though they can also fall into the scaly category as well. E926. E926 is just the much more child friendly version of E621 with no porn being allowed on there. No gif. No gifing on, e on E926 or you'll be thrown in uh, horny solitude. Fursuiting. Fursuiting refers to the term used when someone wears their fursuit while doing some sort of activity. If you need a visual example, look at my previous videos where I'm wearing my fursuit. I am fursuiting in those videos, wearing my fursuit. Circles. Circles are a species of furry that have a shark-like head but are completely furred. If you choose to have a circle as your persona, expect a lot of other furries to call you cheese. 
including me. Cheese. VR chat. VR chat is a software that allows a person to explore different places and meet new friends online. You can make your own avatar as well. Though the name has VR in it, I have been told that you do not need VR in order to use VR chat. If you decide to use VR chat, I do hope you have a splendid time as from what I've seen, it seems amazing and it seems hilarious as hell. Furry drama. Furry drama is just any kind of drama that happens inside the furry community. That's, that's, that's it. Nothing else to it. Other can. Other can refers to a subset of furries that believe they are non-human, being partially or wholly animal, whether mythical or real. Ferals. Ferals refers to furries who walk on all fours just like a feral would, like a dog or a cat or whatever. Obviously, this category would be incomplete without mentioning the obvious. Ferals have strongly been sexualized by furries and non-furries alike. This does not mean that all furries are zoophiles. In fact, most furries, like myself, are against zoophilia. So yeah, I hope that clears things up a little bit, even we're against zoophiles, so... Any haters out there who are just like, Oh, furries are fucking animals! No, we, we don't. Most of us don't. Some do, but we're not that. Most of us hate that. We will find them and, uh, let's just say Salem Witch Charles 2.0. Fetish Event Horizon. All I was able to come across with this one was a band named Burn Fetish, for whatever fucking reason, who made a song called Event Horizon. In my opinion, the song isn't bad, but it's definitely not something I would listen to on my own. I also came across porn as well, but not very porn. I honestly have no idea what this has to do with theories. If anyone can find anything, please let me know, or don't for our sakes. ERP. ERP is the abbreviation for erotic roleplay. It's just roleplay but with sex involved. Much, much more sexual than just regular casual roleplay. Kamloob Dependency. Kamloob Dependency is what it sounds like. It's just furries depending on some bad dragon Kamloob to do the job. I have no idea why the fuck I made this video. You guys better appreciate me for it. Especially for the work I put into this and all the mental scars I gave myself. I, um, yeah, I didn't have to, but uh, I did because you guys also wanted this. So, uh, yeah, you're fucking welcome. I'm sorry. You're, you're welcome. Thigh highs. Thigh highs are just items of clothing that reach up and are farther than your thighs. Almost all fanboy furries wear thigh highs, and just from boys in general. Paw worship. Paw worship, to put it simply, is a paw fetish. Yes, people are attracted to paws. Now, not everyone is attracted to them for sexual reasons. Some are attracted to a certain style of paw, that usually being the cartoony, squishy looking paw pads. Why anyone is into them sexually is beyond me. Insect anthros. Insect anthros, which antho being short for anthropomorphic, are a type of anthropomorphic species that, you guessed it, is an insect. You can be any type of insect, though I have most commonly seen bees as the main species, which I can see why. They're very adorable. Very, very adorable. Anthro character models only. Anthro character models only is... I'm not really sure. I assume it's some sort of furry 3D character model, whether it be safe for work or not safe for work, possibly used for VR chat or some other fantasy, fetish, BDSM maybe? STEM. This was just someone asking furries if they worked in the STEM field. STEM being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Which, according to Fur Science, 11.9% of furries pursued a science degree, that being biology, chemistry, and physics. 11.9% of furries also pursued an engineering degree. Just, you know, a little fun fact for you guys. Ink Bunny. Ink Bunny is a furry art site that mainly caters toward adult furry fans. Though, when I checked the website out, I didn't really come across any NSFW artworks, so for all I know that it could have changed over the years. Maybe for the better? Not really up to me. 
Kimono Superiority. Kimono Superiority was, again, one of those things that I had trouble finding. What I assume it to be was some kind of fetish or kink where people, namely furries, of course, found it attractive when someone with a kimono took on a superior role in a relationship or doing private bajimomi time. Yif Flash Games yeah, it, it's what it sounds like. Back when Flash was around, many people made furry Yif Flash games. These games could be found on sites like E621 and a website that I do not believe is running anymore called com.game. C-O-M-D-O-T-G-A-M-E. Halley Labs, or Haley Labs, I really have no idea to pronounce this, I apologize is the new name for the Lab Fox Tracks Bandcamp, which was a music label by Emma Essex, who was a furry music artist. I have not heard any of their songs, but they I would be interested in listening to them. With that being said, congrats on making it to layer 5 of this iceberg, or to the end of it. However, this is only part 1 of 2. You still have 5 more layers to go. Looking at this chart in front of me, things will only get much, much worse from here. With that said though, I hope you all have a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening.